You know, I hear that introduction, and I think when I listen to it, I think that sounds like somebody that's got their shit together. Am I allowed to say shit, by the way? Uh, but it's funny because the one thing I have always struggled with is my confidence, and I was in the back room with Sasha talking with her, and I was like, oh my God, I'm so nervous, and I'm so scared to come out here and talk to you guys because I do struggle with confidence, and that's always been my issue. And that's a perfect segue into kind of what I want to come here and share with you guys. I think the thing I wanted to do is really just be honest, completely authentic with you guys and tell you a bit about my life. So when I started playing on the national team, it was 1992 was my first camp. 1993 was my first real big camp where there was a selection and I was selected to the national team and I played in the World University Games. And it's interesting because I actually started with Canada when I got onto the team. So I was on the team starting and my biggest struggle was my confidence. It was honestly insane. I was like paralyzed by fear. Like I would literally go to practices. I would look around and I'd be like, what's wrong with me? Like, why am I feeling this much fear? Like I'm terrified. It paralyzed me. I used to walk up to my dad. My dad came to all the practices. He was kind of my coach growing up. And I used to say to my dad, oh my God, dad, did you see Charmaine Hooper? Did you see this player? And he turned to me and he'd say, well, you know, you're just as good as them. And I would be like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not as good as them. Like, no way, I'm, I'm not that good. Like, these players are amazing. And I remember playing in the World University Games in 93, and we were playing against China. It was a really big game. And I remember the night before the game, I felt so bad for my, my roommate at the time because I kept turning on and off the light because I literally was terrified. I'd turn off the light and I would have panic attacks. So I'd turn on the light, I'd read, I'd turn off the light, I'd have a panic attack. And I literally did that all night long. I did not sleep a wink. So needless to say, your performance suffers because I'm not sleeping, I'm, I'm feeling insecure, I have no confidence, I'm on the field. And it's so weird because literally I'm, I'm playing a lot. So I don't know where this came from. I mean, I played for Laurie. I had a successful career. I had a successful career here in Guelph, uh, played provincially. So I played in the Canada Games. But for some reason, when I made it onto the national team, I really, really struggled. So something a lot of people don't know about me is 1995, it was a World Cup year, and that's the year that everybody, you know, wants to play in the World Cup. That's what we train for. We've been training our entire lives to play in the World Cup. Canada qualified, so we're going to our selection camp. And the selection camp was in Hamilton at McMaster University. We were all staying there, and the first week uh, was our selection, and, and at the end of the week, the coach comes up to me, and she basically tells me, I didn't make the team. So in 1995, the year of the World Cup, been on the team for three years now, I actually got cut from the national team. And it was interesting because I remember part of me was a little bit surprised, but part of me probably thought self-fulfilling prophecy, oh, I'm not good enough to be here anyway. But the coach said to me, I want you still to train with the team just in case there's an injury. So you can still come into Hamilton and train. I came back to Guelph, so I was traveling back and forth. The girls were staying, the rest of the team was staying in Hamilton. So it was a bit odd for me you know, kind of driving in and out. I wasn't part of the team. And so I was driving in, I was training with the team, I was coming back. And the day before, the team went on a pre-World Cup tour. So before the World Cup, what we did was everybody got together and we trained and played all over the world and played in games all over the world, preparing for the World Cup. So the day before the first trip, which was France, player got injured. I made it back on the team on an inter interim basis. And so I was off to France for the first pre-World Cup tour. Great awesome, still feeling a lack of confidence. I get to France and my sister knew what I struggled with. So my sister had given me a book to read. That's the book that I read in France. And it's so interesting because I actually remember so clearly being on a bus in France and reading this book. It's a small book, easy read. And basically the premise of the book is that your thoughts create your reality and that you can control your thoughts, and your thoughts don't need to control you. I remember sitting on this bus and being completely blown away that I had no idea that the thoughts in my head were thoughts I put into my head. It wasn't my coaches, it wasn't my teammates, it wasn't my dad, it wasn't anybody I'd played with, but they were thoughts that I was in control of. A couple amazing quotes by, by this, you have to read this book, it's amazing. I remember sitting on this bus in France and making a decision right there. There was no freaking way that my thoughts were going to be controlling me. I was going to control my thoughts. And I made that decision. I was like, there's no way my performance on the field will be affected by this. 
I'm controlling this. And I took control of my mind. And it's so weird, the drastic change in, in what happened to me. I went on that field in France, and I had the best tournament in France that I'd ever had with the national team. So much so that my coach actually came up to me after that tournament in France, and she said to me, the best thing I ever did was cut you. You're a completely different player. And I said, the best thing that ever happened was reading this book. I ended up making it onto the starting lineup, and then this happened. Take the risk of putting it into play with all these red shirts there. Hand behind for a corner, and let's see if Helen switches tactics. Helen Stumbos. Oh, goodness. Helen Stumbos. Through the defenders and through the open arms of Hope Powell, she curved it in from the corner. Better look at it from here. Look at the goalkeeper try and palm it. Completely misses it. Number 11, Sam Parry on the line, can't stop it. And certainly, Ellen Stonebush deserved the goal, albeit unorthodox. She's certainly been the best player for Canada today. So how crazy is that? Within a few weeks of being cut from the team, I went into the World Cup and became one of the top players for Canada. It was insane. The only difference was my mind. I didn't become a better player overnight. I didn't get fitter. My skill level didn't improve. I just started focusing on my, my mind, on the positive. And it's amazing because I feel like I'm so grateful for that experience because it's really put me on a path to study the mind. I read lots of books on the mind. I go to seminars on the power of the mind. And, and I think the thing we don't realize is how much this controls our bodies. Our mind can actually create, our thoughts can create physical responses. I mean, imagine for a second putting a lemon in your mouth and sucking on it. If you actually think about that for a few seconds, how many people's mouths start to salivate? Crazy, isn't it? Your thought just created a physical response. Imagine what happens when we tell ourselves we're not good enough, when we tell ourselves we're ugly, you know, we can't do something. Do you not think your body creates a physical response? And if I look at my performance on the national team, my body was physically responding to thoughts of not being good enough. So guess what my body did? It wasn't good enough. Until I put it into my mind that no way, my thoughts will not lead my performance. I will lead my performance. I will control my thoughts. Interesting. Best lesson I've ever had. Well, actually, I've had a few lessons. So you would think at this point, now I got my shit together, right? I figured everything out. Well, I went on to have a world, uh, Hall of Fame career. I got inducted to the Hall of Fame in 2008. My career ended in 1999 because of a serious knee injury, but I kind of got into commentating and I was hosting TV shows. And so I thought that I had bypassed, you know, everybody talked about when you finish your career, you go through a bit of a depression, which I kind of get because you spend every waking hour pretty much playing sport when you're playing at that level. But I was still involved in sport. I was a partner in a television production company. I was a partner in a music production company. I was in a relationship. So I felt like I I had so much going on in my life and I was focused so much on all of those things that I didn't feel the loss of sport. And then in 2005, everything started crumbling. My relationship, my television production company, my music production company were all crumbling at the same time. And there's something about my life a lot of people really don't know and I guess they're going to know when they see this video, but I went through a really bad uh, place in my life. And I, I'm not going to go into too many details because I'll scare the crap out of my parents when they see this. But I got into a really dark place. And I started not being very good to myself and abusing myself for about two years. It got so bad that I actually painted my entire house dark brown because I just didn't want any light. It's how dark it felt for me. And it got so bad that my sister came over one day and I was in my bed. And I was crying. And I was like, I'm so lost. I don't know who I am anymore. And not long after that, I remember picking up another book and going, you know what, I can make a decision right now. I can choose to continue on this path of self-destruction and potentially die, or I can make a choice to change. And I wanted to change. So I picked up this book, and I remember this so clearly. I remember opening it up to this page, and it basically had you rate your satisfaction of your life in all aspects, finance, career, attitude, social life, relationships, family, et cetera, et cetera. 
And I was literally between zero and two on all of them. I just was not in a great place. I was not happy. And the next thing you had to do was figure out what you could do, one thing that could start bringing some happiness into your life. And I remember sitting there going, well, what is it that makes me happy? Like, what really, really makes me happy? And then it came back to sport. I hadn't had sport in my life at this point for about seven or eight years. And I knew I had to bring it back into my life. It couldn't be soccer because my knee was done. So I joined a volleyball league here in Guelph. I did some research. I found a great competitive volleyball league. And I played, started playing volleyball. And I'll tell you something. And this is such an important thing. And hearing the last speaker too, it's so true. One thing, finding one thing that made me happy changed my entire course of my life. It changed everything. It brought in that aspect of my life where I needed to get out there and be physical and be active. It also, I put this picture in because these are all my friends. These are my friends that I met through volleyball, 90% of them, and they've become my family now. But I think the interesting thing is when you make your destination happy, what happens in your life is everything starts to get better. All aspects of your life start to get better. And actually, when I think about my career and when I was growing up, I mean, everybody used to ask me, well, what are you going to do with soccer? And I used to just be like, I don't know. I love it. Like, I love playing it. It was what I love to do. Fahim loved doing, you know, video work and animation. And look what he's done. He's followed his passion. And when I was growing up following soccer, I didn't know what I would do. My degree is in phys ed and psychology. And through soccer, I've gotten into television and broadcasting. I had no idea it would take me that route. But I always knew I was in a place where I was very happy. And it's amazing because I think in life, one, we're always going to go through struggles. Always. Everybody's, you're in a place now where you're going to go to college. You're going to be in relationships. You're going to have family problems. And I always say to people, figure out that one thing that makes you happy and start doing it. Is it taking a walk in the park? Is it listening to music? Is it playing music? It could just be that simple, but it's funny because I talk to all of my friends whenever they're going through struggles, and I say to them, well, what can you do right now to make yourself happy? And it seems like such an easy question, but we've all lost touch with what makes us happy. And in your careers, take a step back. You know, we're always put so much pressure on us. You know, I, I go to these courses and they're all like, well, what's your goal in five years? What's your goal? What do you want to do? And I'm always like, like, slow down. What makes you happy? Why don't we all start with the destination of happy and see where that takes us? I don't know if you guys know John Lennon, but I remember reading something that said when he was asked in school what he wanted to do for his career, he said he wanted to be happy. And everything flows from that happy place. I promise you, I've interviewed so many athletes. I've interviewed so many successful business leaders. And the one thing they say is they're always followed their love, their passion. They followed their happy. So those are my two biggest lessons in my life. And, and it's funny because I actually, when I got the email about talking at this event, my instant reaction was, no, I'm not going to talk at the event because I do have this fear of getting in front of people and speaking. But one, I wanted to really share these stories with you just to show you that you know, lessons are great, but we have so much power. Our minds, our minds are powerful, the most powerful computer we have. And start thinking about what makes you happy. Follow that place. Make your destination happy. Everything flows from there. So I'm really happy I made it here. I actually trained myself every day since I got the email to get up here and speak to you guys. But I really hope some of this information and some of these lessons can be some inspiration to you guys when you're going through difficult times and to realize that everything can be controlled up here. We have the power. Thanks, guys.